So, you want to get into healing in Final Fantasy XIV. You're new to the game and don't know where to start, or maybe you just picked up healing. If you're looking for some tips and advice, or want to hear the thoughts of someone who has healed in Final Fantasy XIV for a long amount of time at a high level, this video is for you. In this video, we will be going over the healing culture in this game, from dungeons to 8-man difficulty content. If you are curious or are looking for an in-depth dungeon guide for healing, you can check out my Scholar Dungeon Guide video, which primarily focuses on Scholar, but has tips that can be used universally throughout all the healers. Now, if you are new to Final Fantasy XIV but have experience in other MMOs, healing in Final Fantasy XIV can be vastly different than what you are accustomed to. First, let's start off with the basic fundamentals of what healing is in Final Fantasy XIV. If you are coming over from another MMO, let's say World of Warcraft, you may be more familiar with what we call reactive healing. Reactive healing isn't necessarily bad because in situations such as progression or unfamiliar raid environments like the Party Finder, you may need to react suddenly if things get out of control. However, in Final Fantasy XIV, most outgoing damage is going to be predictable because it is scripted and generally hardly changes between pull to pull. Because of this, it should lead you to play at a more proactive play style. Now, what does playing proactively mean? Playing proactive means researching a fight or making mental notes of outgoing damage as it happens and planning your toolkit around it with little to no variance between pulls. Whether you're doing dungeons or raids, you should be thinking about the fight ahead of time so you know what abilities you're going to use for the occasion. While most damage in this game is scripted and predictable, there sometimes can be slight variables between pulls, like in E4 Savage, you may get a landslide or car pattern first, which can directly affect your healing rotation. When you run into these scenarios, it is important to understand different trajectories if a fight does include them and adapt by making separate healing rotations if need be. One more core fundamental I want to touch upon is the fact of healer DPS. In Final Fantasy XIV, you have the responsibility to do damage if your healing is not immediately needed. When you get to in-game raids, your skill level as a healer is directly influenced by how efficient you are at doing damage while keeping the party alive. I say this very specifically as doing damage alone does not make you a good healer. You need to be able to work with your co-healer and be communicative while being able to either prevent or recover others' mistakes, on top of keeping the party alive. I've brought this up in a previous video, but if you are not comfortable doing large amounts of damage right off the bat, don't force yourself to, as it can lead to wipes. Instead, start off lighter and slowly increase the amount of damage you do until you are synergized with your own job, party, or even the fights. Your fundamentals will slowly get better with the more experience you have, so don't stress about it too much. One of the most basic fundamentals in Final Fantasy XIV is the faster you kill things, the less damage you'll take. Now this is more referring to dungeons than trials and raids, as in those fights, outgoing damage is more streamlined and consistent. Damage in dungeons can be more burst-like. Once you and your party's cooldowns have expired, it's going to be a lot harder for you to deal damage as the tank is most likely going to start getting mollywhopped. This is where DPSing in dungeons is very valuable, as with a more optimized damage rotation, you can kill things before the tank's cooldowns fall off or before the damage overwhelms you. Again, it's perfectly acceptable to start off slow, as performance improvements will naturally come with time and experience. Fundamentals are nice and all, but what about the mentality of a healer? Before going over anything, let's talk a little bit about this. What should you think? What should you do? Now this is more in reference to 8-man content, but can be taken into all aspects of the game. As a healer in Final Fantasy XIV, you are the backbone of the party. You control most of the tempo and potential in clearing with a group. Try not to panic when things go wrong or when damage gets heavy. Mistakes are going to happen and it's going to be your responsibility to handle some of them. The biggest new player mistake are healers that will panic when players start dying or use their whole toolkit to handle something that can be handled with an ability or two. If there's one thing you take from this video, it's the mentality that, even in situations that seem impossible to recover, there's always a way until there's not. One of the worst things you can do is give up when the going gets tough, and as somebody who basically lives in the party finder, this is all too common. It's also extremely important that you have patience and are communicative. If you don't have patience going into healing, then you are going to have a bad time. Remember, you are the backbone of the party. It is your job to make sure the party gets to the finish line regardless of what happens. This means you are going to be correcting player errors. As someone who switched from DPS to healer, the transition of mindset was probably the biggest hurdle. Every mistake somebody makes, regardless of who makes it, will most likely affect you. Remember that. You should also be communicative. Tanks pulling wall-to-wall -wall in dungeons should be the norm, as a DPS should be spamming their AoE abilities on large packs. If you notice a tank is not popping cooldowns, a slight friendly nudge to remind them or mention it usually goes a long way. 
Now, some tanks won't be as receptive to your advice, and that's fine, because there's not really much you can do there. This goes back to the patience part of healing, but if you encounter someone who is not receptive and does not use their tank cooldowns, you'll just have to get through it. But please tanks, if a healer is offering you advice on how to make things easier for them and the party, at least try to listen to them. What you do usually affects the healers the most, so it pretty much goes without saying, if a healer tells you to pull big, try to pull big, and if a healer tells you to pop cooldowns and spots, use your cooldowns. Now this is going to bring us to our ABCs of playing Final Fantasy XIV. ABC stands for Always be casting. This is also commonly called rolling your GCD. From my experience, healers who wait around for damage to happen or don't learn how to properly roll their GCD are much slower at reacting than players who do. Now, if you're expected to constantly roll your GCD, then how are you supposed to heal when you need to, well, heal unexpectedly? There are two major ways you can cancel a cast. The first and fastest way is to press escape. This immediately ends your cast and lets you begin a new cast right away. The second method is by using your movement keys to stutter step and cancel your cast. This is especially important during progression, whether it be mid-core or high-end, where things may not always go your way and you will have to react to unexpected situations. With the fundamentals of healer out of the way, let's delve into some of the basics to help you get started on your healer experience. Starting off, a pretty common question I get asked a lot is how to set up your UI for healing. Well, your keybinds and your UI are going to be specific to you as a player, but there are ways you can set it up to make your life easier as a healer. You're going to want to set up your HUD for practical healing. I think it's important that you consolidate as much information as you can into your peripheral vision. This means having all the information that you need to have access to within range of your view without having to look around the screen too much. When looking at my UI, you can see that my party list is slightly off-center to my left, my enemy list is slightly off-center to my right, my status effects are almost centralized on my screen, my hotbars and perimeter bars are centered down, and my target bar is centered up. This lets me absorb all the information that I need to know just by looking at one point on my screen. If you don't do something akin to this, you may run into something we call tunnel vision. As an example, let's say you have your party list all the way in the corner of your screen. You may run into the issue when doing content where you don't notice someone is in lethal range just due to the fact that you are looking at something like your hotbar or the boss mechanics when these moments happen. Like I previously stated, UI setups are completely personal and vary from person to person, so make something that works for you, but keep in mind the things I brought up. Alright, so you just picked up Final Fantasy XIV. You're going through the leveling process and finally get to the dungeons. The first couple of dungeons in this game are pretty basic and are designed in mind for teaching you different aspects of the game. When doing these dungeons, try to get a feel for your job and your toolkit while learning how the game mechanics work. Your toolkit will be much smaller earlier in the game, with one or two single target heals, a party wide heal, and a few damage spells. As it goes without saying, but when going through the leveling process, make sure your gear is up to date in terms of item level. This is very important as having up to date gear will increase your overall healing power, which will make your journey through the leveling process much easier. When using gray common vendor gear, ideally you want it to be HQ as it will increase the overall main stat and the substats of it, but in Q is usually better than nothing. If you are struggling to keep your gear relevant when leveling, there are multiple vendors around Eorzea you can purchase in Q gear from, or you can use the market board. Several quests in this game will also reward you with coffers for equipment and weapons, so make sure you pop those as well. Alright, so as you're going through the game, whether it be dungeons, trials, or even raids, don't be reserved about using certain AoE healing as a form of single target healing. Tools like Asylum for White Mage and Earthly Star for Astrologian heal everyone that is in their radius, but they can also be used to sustain the tank's HP. When healing in dungeons, this is especially important as AoE tools can be used in conjunction with single target healing during trash pulls to keep the tank alive. Do note that this rule is less relevant to scholars outside of Sacred Soil, as using Indomitability or Fey Blessing takes away resources from other abilities in your toolkit that may serve a better purpose and are limited by its job mechanics like Aetherflow or the Fey Gauge. Another thing to pick up on, especially when doing the harder content, is that all AoE healing acts as a form of HP sustain on the tank. This is important to keep in mind as it can save valuable single target resources in your toolkit for later parts of a fight and keep the tank healthier. As an example, a white mage who is using a rapture with a combination of asylum and a size may potentially save you the need for an immediate usage of a heal like Tetragrammaton or a GCD heal like Cure 2 or Regen as the combination of the aforementioned AoE healing is enough to keep the tank in a safe HP range. 
When tanks are pulling mobs in dungeons, as a white mage in Astrologian, you have the option to use instant cast heals like regen and aspect of benefic on the tank to mitigate incoming damage until they finish said pull. This is extremely useful as these abilities will keep the tank healthy as they are pulling the mob packs and will give you more breathing room after they are done pulling, enabling you to get your bearings faster. Just keep in mind that when you are doing this, you are staying as close as you can to the tank as these abilities have the potential to snap aggro onto you with the outgoing healing they generate. This can disrupt pulls or make the tank's job more annoying, especially if they are not experienced, so glue yourself to the tank until they finish grabbing enemies. It's a good habit to learn to stick next to the tank when pulling regardless because the faster you can stop moving, the faster you can start handling the pull. If you are further behind during a pull, you're going to waste precious seconds catching up to the party before you can even do anything. Once you have established healing on a tank or are just waiting for the pull to reach a stop, you can use actions like your dots or other forms of instant cast actions like Art of War on enemies to get a head start on killing them. Just be sure that you don't use Holy before a pull ends, please. As you climb levels, you will gain access to more and more off-global cooldown skills, which can be used to heal between damaged GCDs on mob packs or bosses. You can start to learn how to be more aggressive when you have more of these abilities readily available. If you are not comfortable DPSing when you have no tools to fall back on, it's perfectly okay to be more reserved, but being reserved does not mean doing nothing. If the party looks healthy, throw out some DPS spells. Some healers like White Mage even have abilities that can effectively mitigate damage while doing damage. Abilities like Holy and Assize both can act as a form of effective mitigation. Assize heals and deals AoE damage with a potency of 400, and Holy stuns enemies in intervals of 4, 2, and 1 seconds while doing AoE damage with a potency of 140. The stun on Holy should also not be taken for granted as it can mitigate damage upwards or even more to the same amount of healing you would get with a skill like Benediction. It's also not a bad idea that when you get into a dungeon or instance to take a quick glance at your party list. Your party composition may change how you handle certain scenarios. If you have a Dark Knight in your party for example, it's probably not a bad idea to hold Benediction as a white mage for their invulnerability skill, Living Dead, as it can instantly resolve the status debuff it gives without giving you too much grief. Or if you are a scholar, you may want to avoid the use of that ability altogether by keeping them at a comfortable HP range. This is doubly true if you are doing 8-man based content and you start playing with a second healer in the group. One major mistake I see that happens more so in Trials and Savage Raids are players that will immediately begin casting a raise as soon as somebody dies. This is normally fine outside the cases where the tank or party is about to take a lethal amount of damage or mechanics that require you to move are about to happen. It is extremely important that if your swift cast is not up, make sure the party is in no danger of dying before beginning a hard cast raise. While this next one may come as obvious to some, it's very important that you learn what your abilities do and how they interact with its own toolkit and other jobs. For example, when playing white mage, you have access to the ability known as Asylum. At level 78, this gets traded to increase healing received done to players by 10% while inside of it. This means it will increase the healing of your own skills like Tetragrammaton, Assize, and Medica 2, but will also increase the potency of healing abilities from other jobs like Constellation from Scholar, Earthly Star from Astrologian, or even Equilibrium from Warrior. Speaking of Earthly Star from Astrologian, this is another ability we can talk about. This ability has an initial potency of 540, but after 10 seconds it increases to 720. Because of this, you're always going to want to prepare a star at least 10 seconds in advance of when you're actually going to want to use it. It's also not a bad idea to study up on what actions some jobs bring to the table that can potentially change the way you play. When thinking about a healer's kit, you need to think about how it works within itself, but it's important to look at what abilities do and how they work in tangent with others. While we're on the topic about our healing toolkits, let's take a moment to talk about overhealing. Overhealing is the concept of having HP restoration actions restore health when players have full HP. You want to avoid doing this as much as possible as this results in a waste of your tools. Because critical hits from healing spells are a thing though, this is however not avoidable, so use your best judgment. Overhealing in the party finder or duty finder is going to naturally happen to an extent as sometimes you'll place a form of AoE healing, let's say a Salamo Earthly Star, and the other healer in the group will heal over it without realizing. If you notice that the party's HP is sitting at a sustained level and is not dropping, don't feel the need to throw out extra heals. It's also important to note that a high overheal percentage also doesn't necessarily mean improper play, as abilities like Assize can rack up overheal percentages quickly due to the nature of the skill. This is further amplified in fights which have little outgoing damage. 
It's also a good idea to err on the side of caution with your heals when playing with a random healer. Sometimes players won't be consistent with their healing and if you expect your co-healer to heal at a certain spot, and they don't, and you don't, the death is probably imminent. Here is a log comparison of a run in my raid group and a run in party finder. You can see the differences in overheal percentages is fairly drastic. My final tip before sending off the video is about slide casting. Slide casting is the process of moving before your cast ends, but after it has already registered in the game. This is mainly due to the way the game engine works. When looking at your cast bar, you can see when casting an ability such as Broil or Glare, we move our characters when the bar says 0.50 remaining. At around this time, give or take, depending on your latency, you will be able to move without interrupting your cast. Learning how to slide cast is extremely important, as maximizing your damage and healing in boss fights revolves around pre-positioning yourself and or reaching destinations. If you don't learn how to properly slide cast, then you will lose potential GCDs by moving slow or using instant cast abilities with lower potencies to get around. A lot of players might not know about this simple trick for slide casting, but if you place an emote on your hotbar, preferably near your cast bar, it will gray out, but right before your cast bar finishes, it will glow. When this happens, this means you are able to move. This can be a very valuable tool when learning how to properly slide cast, and I highly recommend using it until it becomes ingrained into your play. I hope this video has been useful to you in some way. Uh, we went over a lot of information here and there is definitely more I could talk about, but let's save that for another time. If this video feels overwhelming, do not worry. Space things out at your own pace and take it from there. Don't overload yourself with information. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe for more content, and I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching, and peace!